Thank you once again for joining us today. Um, you were one of the first people I even reached out to regarding to the Becoming off worldly Together community before I even created the community. So um, you have been aware of this for quite some time. But for those of you who don't know Michael Gallagher, he is a doctor, the assistant clinical professor at the University of Alberta in Canada. Um, and I don't want to read your bio because that tends to be boring. So I want you to talk about who you are, a little bit about your background, if you please. Yes, certainly. So, um, so yeah, I've, uh, um, you know, and actually, uh, uh, since uh, more recently moved to, uh, to University of British Columbia, so similar sort of, uh, uh, similar sort of, uh, um, uh, you know, similar sort of, you know, they, they change it from assistant clinical professor to clinical assistant professor. So it's pretty much about the same. Um, but yeah, so um, my day job really is uh, as a family physician, I was trained in, uh, uh, in rural family medicine and spent a lot of time in southern Alberta and Canada and then up in Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories as part of my training. And my connection to space uh, really started, my formal connection to space started in 2010 when I was selected by the Canadian Space Agency to do an aerospace medicine elective at Kennedy Space Center down in Florida. And, um, you know, really that, that kind of set a course for uh, these next several, I guess it's now been about 11, it's been 12 years of, uh, of really, you know, being, you know, fairly, fairly heavily involved uh, personally in, you know, trying to push the space industry forward in a really unique way. And uh, I mean, I got to see Space Shuttle Discovery launch and land at that time. I saw Atlantis get uh, rolled out to the pad. I got to touch Space Shuttle Endeavor. Um, and uh, it really, <laughs> it, it was kind of at about that time where I thought well, some some wonderful folks uh, 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 who've, uh, who've joined us and are, are working very hard on a, uh, uh, a review article for lower body negative pressure um, and, and looking at uh, applying for uh, for a few grants. We did have something called the Space 101 uh, lecture series last year that uh, that uh, Shauna Pandya was was instrumental in, in spearheading. Um, and so and so when we look at some of the different projects, um, uh, another thing that we engaged a student team on was uh, uh, you know, that we were trying to help them uh, further develop uh, something uh, that had been created a while ago called, called a, um, uh, basically a, a, an in situ resource utilization device where you would convert uh, carbon dioxide to oxygen using Martian regolith. So it was a really interesting project that we, you know, we hope to kind of bring to a more prototype level uh, by engaging with the University of Toronto. Uh, there, uh, the, actually the project that's made at the farthest is something called the a free floating locker, which we have tested in uh, a microgravity flight and up in Canada uh, at the National Research Council last year, where, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's kind of a double contained uh, um, uh, prototype that is meant to be able to uh, help people conduct fluid physics experiments while reducing basically, you know, uh, something called G-jitter, which is something where, uh, you know, the, the, the device would shake. Uh, and so that just helps, you know, you get a lot better uh, results for, uh, for fluid physics experiments. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's a bit of a, a, an overview of a bit more of what we're doing and kind of how often we meet in some of our other activities. So. Great. Yeah. I'd love to hear more about that Mars oxygen experiment, how that compares to MOXIE, but we do have a question in the chat. I want to get to Chris Stanley asks, um, what do you think will be the health concerns of extended stays on, on the moon? Mm, good question. So, um, you know, I, th I think, uh, and a lot of folks who've, who've been at, uh, uh, who work at, at uh, you know, a lot of the government space agencies uh, have said it really well uh, with regards to how does space affect the body? And, and space is actually pretty hard on the body. Uh, in fact, you probably would say it makes you age really, really fast. If you were to look at a lot of the, you know, just to sum up the changes that happen, your your bones do start to get thinner, your muscles do start to waste away, your 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 uh, uh, your uh, heart does start to to get a bit smaller. Uh, the, these vision changes that happen to you, uh, well, and and it, you know, really quite quite amazing. And uh, I think the other thing is that, especially when I kind of thought about taking this taking this role on was just kind of saying, well, 
you know, and especially at that time, and I think it's changing now, but but really, you know, there, there's, I think people are excited about space, but I think there's there's a bit of a, a barrier in a lot of traditional organizations to sit to actually crossing over and saying, yes, I can actually be actively part of that. And and so, you know, I remember uh, when I did a, a, a project, a research project for, uh, uh, my residency program, and it was on basically uh, dealing with what are called epidural hematomas in rural settings. And what that is, is if somebody, say, hits their head, they some people can get a bleed in the brain. And so I was looking to kind of say, OK, you know, should you um, should somebody in a rural setting intervene uh, at that stage and would that save lives or not? Um, but I also as part of my write up for it, my final write up, I thought, well, I'll maybe put a sentence in there just because I'm interested in space of this could have applications for long duration exploration missions on the moon or Mars. And my preceptor said, oh, no, no, don't put that in. <laughs> so uh, so it was interesting to kind of see that that, you know, it's still for a lot of organizations seen as, OK, well, you know, yeah, it's exciting, but don't you know, don't, don't, you know, be careful where you include it and how you include it. So it's nice to be part of an organization that kind of says, okay, look, you know, we're a nonprofit. We can be driven by, by, you know, the fact that we've come together and we've decided that this is important. And so it's nice to be able to say, okay, you know, there are lots of people who uh, can can who have a lot to give and a lot to contribute to the commercial space industry. And, and yes, that does include um, them doing meaningful work in space. And by in space, it actually means, you know, actually flying. And this one will be up as soon as it's done. And, you know, every month we bring a, experts like Michael who can talk to us about going to space, preparing to go to space. And in fact, that's my next question, Michael. Any advice for people who would like to go to space as a commercial payload specialist or commercial astronaut who just wants to wear, you know, some kind of bracelet that measures vitals, you know, something as simple as that. Any advice for them? Well, and I think it's 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 one of those things where, yeah, this is such this is such a new area of.